Good evening, everybody. And welcome to another online review session in organic chemistry. In today's session, we are going to review for exam number four, uh, which is scheduled for Thursday, April 25. At this point, I am going to call on one of you. Which uh, is going to deal with carbonyl condensation, condensation reactions and chemistry of amines. OK, very good, and thank you. So uh, just as Natalia had just told us, we are going to discuss the uh, carbonyl condensation reactions and the chemistry of amines in today's session. Uh, but before we get the session started, let me go ahead and acknowledge those of you who have already joined us. I see Ebra Jiko, Gustin Adejuma, Ines Kifando, Jamel Jemisin, and also Dorsey Lawless, Jaconda Kepers, Kiera Bradley, Lona Kumo, Makamba Saki, Natalia Stepanova, Onyo Lushaye, I'm Pravin Chika. You are all welcome. So what we are going to do today, we are going to use the uh, exam number four that was given in uh, the spring of 2012. Uh, that will be the basis of our discussion today. So right away, what I want us to do is to start with a fairly simple uh, set of uh, questions. Let us start with question number nine. I do hope that all of you have a copy of this exam uh, with you. OK. Uh, uh, Donna, can you go ahead and read this question for us? Provide the missing reagent in the following synthetic scheme. OK, thank you. I'm very good. OK, so here, the, what we want to do here is simply provide the missing reagent in this uh, uh, synthetic scheme. Uh, in the first step, we are going from benzene to uh, toluene. Does anybody know what reagent we, are, we need here? From benzene to toluene, OK? This is uh, alkylation. What kind of reagent do we need? Let us see here. OK. Pravin said uh, fiddle cap alkylation. That is excellent. That is correct. So we are going to use. Uh, Here, the reagent will be methyl chloride in the presence of aluminum chloride. And this is a fiddle cap alkylation. OK, this is an example of an electrophilic aromatic uh, substitution reaction. OK, now we want to go from a to a toluene to p nitro toluene. Uh, what reagent do we need here? What reagent do we need to? This will be a nitration reaction. OK. OK, nitric acid in the presence of sulfuric acid. Excellent. That is correct. Nitric acid in the presence of sulfuric acid. And this is another example of electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. Now, keep in mind now that what we want to do here is to uh, and lead to the synthesis of an amine. OK, at this point, we want to go from the p nitrotoluene to the uh, p methyl aniline. OK, we want to convert the nitro group to the amino group. What reagent do we need for this? OK, very good. Somebody said, I think, Jaconda said uh, hydrogen and palladium. Natalia said hydrogen and palladium. That is correct, so we need here hydrogen and palladium. Now, what other reagent do we need? Uh, can we use for this? What are the, okay, iron in the presence of, of, of iron in dilute acid. Uh, sometimes you could also use tin chloride in dilute acid for uh, transforming a nitro group to an amino group right here. OK, very good. Now let us go from the 
the amino group now we want to form the diazonium ion right here we want to turn the amino to diazonium ion what reagent do we need what reagent do we need to go from amino to diazonium ion okay okay very good we need nitrous acid in the presence of sulfuric acid that's the account very good okay so these are simply a straight memorization you need to know those reagents so here for four we need nitrous acid in the presence of sulfuric acid okay very good okay okay at this point for here for five we want to go the reagent here we want to go from the diazonium ion to uh, to a phenol you know that what we want to introduce a drossy group to the uh, benzene uh, moiety benzene structure so what do we need here go from diazonium ion to a phenol okay very good we need copper we need copper copper oxide in the presence of copper nitrate very good and of course water okay so that will transform the diazonium ion to uh, to the phenol okay okay now let us do six uh, we want to go from the phenol and I'm sorry from the uh, uh, methyl uh, p methyl phenol to a benzyl bromide okay in other words we want to transform this methyl group attached to the benzene we want to tra transform to a benzyl bromide okay what reagent do we need for this what reagent do we need for this right here okay we want to go from this here okay the methyl group attached to benzene we want to form we want to introduce a bromine atom in order to replace an hydrogen with bromine what the agent do we need okay I think you guys have forgotten that let us see here okay you could use here MBS would do M bromosusunimide of uh, course you need to know this reagent M bromosusunimide that will transform that will transform a a benzylic uh, hydrogen will replace a benzylic hydrogen in this case hydrogen on this carbon here uh, with a bromine atom okay now about number seven going from here we now go from this benzyl bromide we want to introduce a cyanide we want to introduce a cyanide okay what reagent do we need okay we want to go from this benzyl bromide to benzyl cyanide okay what reagent do we need right here okay potassium cyanide very good potassium cyanide okay and this will be an example of an SN2 reaction very good okay now <coughs> this last step in this sequence here we want to go from the benzyl cyanide uh, to form this primary amine in other words we are going to convert the carbon of the cyanide to a methylene group a CA2 group and at the same time we are going to form a primary amine so what reagent do we need for this LAH very good LAH uh, step one followed by followed by dilute acid okay very good okay so now I think we have uh, started the session on a very good footing so uh, this uh, question is simply designed uh, to familiarize you or to refresh your mind uh, with regard to uh, all of the reagents okay so let us go to question number four okay uh, if you uh, your mic is working now I noticed that you just came back. Can you read this question for us? Okay, Jaconda, can you read this question for us? Thank you.
came for N N dimethyl benzyl amine from toluene. Okay. What this thank you. What this question is asking here to provide a synthetic scheme for N N dimethyl benzene a, ben a benzyl amine from toluene. Okay. N L N N dimethyl benzyl amine from toluene. In other words, they wanted to do this. Go from toluene. I see Oyin is going in and out. She must be having problem with her internet tonight. Okay, to this here. From toluene to this molecule here. Okay. This is a <coughs> NN dimethyl benzyl amine. Okay. Going from our tolerance. Okay. Does anybody know what we need to do here? Uh, let us do a little bit of, bit of analysis. Notice what we have here. Uh, we have to attach a nitrogen uh, to this uh, benzylic carbon, this carbon right here. We have to attach a nitrogen to that. In essence, we want to, they want us to make a, te a tertiary amine. They want us to make a tertiary amine. So what should come to your mind at this point is what method do you know for making a tertiary amine? Okay, so how do we start this? How do we start this? Anybody has an idea? What method do we know for making a tertiary amine? Okay, we want to start with uh, this here. Supposing we start with uh, uh, this toluene, and we, of course we take these two. We want to go to an amide. We want to go to a tertiary amide. Okay, if you want to go to a tertiary amide, because we could make a tertiary, a tertiary amine from a tertiary amide. So therefore, we could uh, oxidize this carbon here to benzoic acid. Of course, you need to know this reagent. That is most important. Now, once you once you convert it to benzoic acid, anybody has an idea what to be the next step? Keep in mind, I want to make a tertiary amide first. What will be the next step here? Okay. Okay, I want to then take this and go to an acid chloride. Now, once I form the acid chloride, at this point, I then want to take this here. Keep in mind, this is what we need to make right here. So I could now take this secondary amine. I take this secondary amine. OK. So this secondary amine will now act as a nucleophilic agent. Uh, this will be. Uh, one of those electro uh, nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction okay this is uh, the nitrogen here will be acting as a nucleophile so therefore we form a secondary amide Now from the secondary amide, what do we do now to get to the final product? What do we do from the secondary amide to get to the final product? Okay, we now take a LAH. Step one, LAH. 
and the H will convert the carbonyl of an amide to a CH2 followed by hydronium ion. So now we get this here. So what we need to do here, what you need here, you need to know those individual reagents and individual reaction in order for you to do. Let's go to number five. Okay. Uh, if your mic is working and you have not spoken tonight, can you go ahead and read this question for us? Okay, let us see here. Okay, uh, Natalia, uh, Natalia, can you go ahead and read this question for us? Provide a synthetic scheme for the following Robinson annihilation product. Okay, very good, and thank you. Now, what they want us to do here, of course, to provide a synthetic scheme for this Robinson annihilation reaction. Okay, the first thing you need to know is Robinson annihilation. is a combination of Michael, Michael addition reaction, followed by, followed by, by Aldo condensation. Okay? So the Robinson annihilation is a combination of uh, Michael addition reaction followed by Aldo condensation. Okay, so let us take a look at this molecule. They want us to make this molecule uh, using Robinson annihilation. Okay, so the first thing we want to do here is to determine since the Aldo condensation is the last is the last step in the Robinson annihilation. Let us see how do we form this directly from Aldo. To help you out, let me go ahead and number these carbons here. Let us call this carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and we call this methyl carbon here carbon 10. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. If we want to make this molecule directly from an aldo, which of these carbon will be your nucleophilic carbon? In other words, which carbon from which carbon are we going to get the enolate anion? And which will be your electrophilic carbon? Which will be your carbonyl carbon that will attract the enolate anion? Just give me the numbers. Okay, okay, the, uh, okay, you say that the nucleophilic carbon is carbon number two, that is correct. Okay, which will be your electrophilic carbon, in other words, the carbonyl carbon? Number three, excellent, excellent, very good. Okay, you are, you are right, so that means that we need to cleave to get this from our aldo condensation, we will cleave this from here. Okay, if that is the case, let us simply go back here we will say that this molecule could come directly from here. Now we say come from here. Okay, so there are four, let us see here. Let us do the numbering. We have, this is still our carbon one. This is carbon two. Come, don't forget, this is a methyl group right here. And because this is now a ketone, okay, <coughs> because we clip this right here. This is your nucleophilic carbon, and this is your electrophilic carbon, which is the carbonyl. So this is one. This is carbon two, 
this is carbon three right here, carbon four, carbon five, carbon six, carbon seven right here, and carbon eight, carbon nine, and this is carbon ten. Okay, so far we say that this, we are going to get the, the final product from this molecule by aldo condensation. This will be our aldo condensation right here. Okay, now let us now take a look at this here. Let us call, okay, we call the final product, uh, let us call it A. And the product that gives the starting material, the, the precursor that gives you the compound A, let us call that B. Now the next question is, how do we get compound B from Aldo addition, I'm, I'm sorry, from Michael addition? Okay, to answer that question, let us take a look at this. For you to get a Michael addition, keep in mind, you need a nucleophile. The nucleophile very often will come from an enolate anion. And then you need an alpha beta unsaturated ketone or aldehyde. Okay? Let us say ketone or aldehyde. Let us use an aldehyde ketone here. Okay, so what does it do? Uh, the nucleophile comes in, attacks this, and the pi electron goes here. Okay, in other words, you are going, we are going to form a new carbon-carbon bond. Okay, so therefore, let us look at this molecule here. Keep in mind, for your Michael addition, you need a nucleophilic carbon that will be formed from an enolate anion. And to get an enolate anion, you need an alpha carbon. So which of this carbon here will be the nucleophilic carbon for our uh, Michael addition? Which of this carbon, just give me the number. Which of this carbon in this molecule here will be the nucleophilic carbon for the Michael addition? Okay. Number seven. Excellent. Number seven. Okay. So if that is the case, if you say this will be your nucleophilic carbon because it, you could form an enolate right here on this carbon, therefore, therefore, which, which carbon will contain your alpha, beta, unsaturated carbon-carbon uh, 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 double bond? Which carbon will contain your carbon-carbon double bond? Give me the number. Which carbon will contain your carbon-carbon double bond? Keep in mind, they must be conjugated with a carbonyl. Okay, let us see here. Okay. Okay, you need a carbon-carbon double bond. You already told us the nucleophile is here. Okay. Okay. This is carbon 9 and this is carbon 8. You told us the nucleophile is here. Okay, exactly. 8 and 9. So therefore, therefore we have to clip this right here. We have to clip this right here. If 8 and 9, if 8 and 9 is your carbon-carbon double bond, and this is your nucleophile, that means that we have, let us look at where we are coming from. Okay, we have that. Then we have this. Okay, let me go ahead and num put the numbers on this. Okay, so that means this is our carbon one still, carbon two right here. This is our carbon three. Follow this very closely now. And this is our carbon four, nothing has changed. Carbon five, carbon six, carbon seven. Now carbon seven has broken away from carbon eight. This is our carbon eight. And this is our carbon nine. And finally, this is our carbon ten. Because that is a metric. Now if you follow that, give me a happy face. 
If you follow that, give me a preface. Okay, very good. So therefore, they say provide the synthetic scheme for the following Robinson annihilation. So therefore, what is the synthetic scheme? Okay, the synthetic scheme, since we now know the all of the starting material, the synthetic scheme will simply be we take this molecule here, let us call this molecule C and this molecule D. So we take molecule D take molecule D okay we, we react molecule D with molecule C okay in this case we, you need <coughs> you need a base to generate the uh, the enolate anion at uh, this carbon here so let us say we use hydroxide in the presence of ethanol as solvent okay and that will be step one okay and then step two you simply now introduce uh, your well let me do step by step let me do step by step okay step one that will generate the enolate anion to generate the enolate anion then step two you then introduce the Michael uh, Michael acceptor which will be your alpha beta unsaturated ketone right here so now introduce that okay well, you introduce that and then of course in the presence of the ethanol so what are you going to get you are now going to get this you now you okay this is molecule C you are now going to get molecule B which is this here you will get molecule B as a result of the Michael addition and that's molecule B okay and then once you get of course the carbonyl is also here okay that's molecule B and then once you get molecule B then you do your you do your aldo okay you do now do your aldo hydroxide again in the presence of your solvent and then you close you do the aldo condensation right here and that gives you molecule A which is your final a product okay that would be that this here uh, carbonyl is here and uh, you get your alpha beta unsaturated compound and that is your molecule A which is right here now if you see that <coughs> give me a happy face okay <coughs> the most important feature here once once you see this molecule here you know you are dealing they told you you are dealing with a Robinson annihilation you need to go backward to see what are the starting material for the Robinson annihilation product and that is what we've done here okay once you know what the starting material is then simply just put them together in a synthetic scheme that is all and of course this is what we call molecule A okay so let us go to question number six okay I don't know how many of you have a working mic uh, Lona is your mic well, if your mic is working I believe it's working read this question for us starting from butanoic acid show how you will synthesize via the arrangement only structural synthetic scheme is required okay thank you um, very good okay so what do they want you to do here they want you to go from butanoic acid and they want you to make propyl amine
Okay? You want it to make propyl amine. Okay, let us do some analysis here. Going from butanoic acid to propyl amine. Now, how many carbon atoms do you have in the starting material? Just give me the number. How many carbon atoms in the starting material? Four. Very good. How many carbon atoms in the product? Three. Okay, so, okay, but of course they've already told you, fortunately enough for you, they've already told you you need to use a uh, Hoffman rearrangement. Ordinarily, uh, we may not tell you uh, that you need to use Hoffman rearrangement. So this is something that you may have to uh, to uh, 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 figure out on your own. But in this particular instance, since they've already told us that we need of my rearrangement, that should make it very easy for you to design a synthetic scheme for this. Okay, so what do we do? Starting from, so what do we do first? We know we need to do an off mine. What do you need for an off mine? Okay, very good. You guys said tyronic chloride, because for an off mine you need a primary amide. Okay, and that will give you tyronic chloride reacts with the carboxylic acid to give you the acid chloride. And then what do you do next? Okay, then the acid chloride reacts with ammonia. Very good. Reacts with ammonia. To give you the to give you the uh, primary amide, okay. Now let me write it better. This all squish out in here. Let us uh, see here. So we have this. Okay, now you have your primary amide, then what do you do? Okay, very good. You do the Hoffman rearrangement. For Hoffman rearrangement, you take bromine and uh, potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. Uh, you get an Hoffman rearrangement in which we are going to lose carbon dioxide. Okay, plus carbon dioxide. Also, in the uh, Hoffman rearrangement, you could also use uh, chlorine. You could also use chlorine and uh, 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 hydroxide. Okay, chlorine will also uh, could also be used in the Hoffman rearrangement. Okay, okay. So this is a fairly simple uh, problem here. So we could uh, move on. Okay. Go to number seven, moving right along. Okay, uh, let us see here. Uh, Oni, is your mic working now? If it is working, can you read this for us? Okay, she's still having problem. Okay, anybody can read this for us if your mic is working. Starting from toluene, provide a synthetic scheme for p-hydroxyphenolacetic acid. Okay, very good. That is our Kiera Bradley. Very good. And thank you. Okay, now what they want us to do here, starting from toluene, they want you to go from toluene right here. And then they want you to make p acetic acid, and that would be this here. Let me write it here. Let me give myself some room. P hydroxyphenyl acetic acid.
Okay, the hydroxy. Starting from toluene, they wanted to make a P hydroxy phenyl acetic acid. So, what do we need to do here? Uh, what do we need to do? Anybody has an idea? Let us look at this problem here. We are starting with tol uh, toluene. At this point, they also now also want you to make a carboxylic acid. Now that what you are going to form a new carbon-carbon bond. At the same time, they want you to introduce if, uh, an hydroxy group in the para position para to this uh, methyl group right here. Does anybody have an idea what we need to do? Okay, anybody have an idea? The first step, let us start with, of course, starting with toluene. Anybody has an idea? Okay. Okay, why don't we try to make the carbon carbon bond first, okay? Let us make the carbon carbon bond. To do that, okay, keep in mind we want to make a carboxylic acid. Okay, so if you want to do that, what I want to do here is to, I am trying to form a green reagent, so I will do an MBS on this here. Okay, I do an MBS on that, and then I do this, I get this. Okay, then from there, I could take, do a green reagent, followed by carbon dioxide, and then followed by hydronium ion, and then what do I have now? I have now made my new carbon-carbon bond, uh, giving a carboxylic acid. Okay, at this, at then at this point, I now have my carboxylic acid in place. Now I do I introduce an hydroxy group to the uh, benzene uh, molecule. How do you do that? Okay, now I want to take this and find a way to introduce an hydroxy group to here. Okay, anybody has an idea? Okay. Okay, supposing now we do, at, at this point I want to see, okay, diazonium okay. ion, excellent. You want to form a diazonium ion, excellent. That is exactly what I was looking for. You want to form a diazonium ion, but before you could form a diazonium ion, you need to form an amino group, right? So the first thing I need to do here is to do a nitration. Okay, this question is not as innocent as it looks. We do a nitration, so now we form this. Okay, so we get a nitro group here. Okay, because this group is an is an auto para director, so we get the nitro group in the para position. Then what do I do? Then I do hydrogenation. Intro, right? Very good, very good. Uh, folks, you need to know this reagent. They have that is the basis for your uh, understanding of organic chemistry. Okay, so now we have this. Now you have this here. Now you form your amino group. Now once you form your amino group. Now we then do diazonium, uh, diazotization from the diazonium ion, and to do that you use nitrous acid in the presence of sulfuric acid. So that gives you your diazonium ion. Close your diazonium ion. Okay, now you form your diazonium ion. 
then what reagent do you need to fall, go from the diazonium ion to, to this here? What reagent do you need? You need, at this point, you need copper oxide in the presence of nitro, uh, potassium nitrate. Okay? Okay, so now you get your, your final product which is right here. Okay, and that is this product right here. Okay, now you notice what we've done here. The, we are able to do this because we know all of these individual reagents and the individual reactions. If you do not know the individual reactions and reagents, you cannot do this. So I keep going back to the fact that you need to know those reagents. Okay, so let us go to any question on this. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Okay. Uh, okay, Jaconda, go ahead and read this for us again. For the synthesis of ethyl acetyl acetic ester from acetic acid. Okay, thank you. Now, this, this question says provide a scheme for the synthesis of ethyl acetyl acetic ester from acetic acid. I think you guys should be able to do this. Okay, you guys should be able to do this. In other words, provide a scheme for going from here. I'm going to leave this for you guys to do. You should be able to do that. Going from uh, acidic acid, I think we did this in class, something similar to this, to ethyl acetoacetic acid. So I am going to leave this for you to do. You should be able to do this. This is your, essentially what you need to do here. Okay, you start off by doing esterification of the acidic acid. Once you do esterification of acidic acid, and then you do your clasing. You do your clasing. Condensa condensation reaction. Okay, so I'm going to leave you to, to complete that particular problem. Okay, let us go to now. Okay, we did now already. Let us go to 10. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Natalia, can you go ahead and read 10 for us? Starting from P bromethaline, provide a synthetic scheme uh, for benzyl bromide. Okay. Thank you. I'm very good. Okay. This is also a fairly uh, tricky question. So you want to start from here? This question is not as simple as it looks. Uh, it's not as, in, as innocent as it looks, but you should be able to do this. Starting from P bromotoluene, they want you to go to here, benzyl. Benzyl bromide. I would say that this question is similar to the one we did. We did something similar to this in class. Anyway, uh, how will you approach this question? Let us do the analysis here. Apparently, we, if you look at this, we need to convert this here to the benzyl bromide. I think we should be able to do that fairly easily. Then we also need to get rid of this bromine. That is, the, that is the key to this question. We need to get rid of this bromine. So what kind of, rea what is the most important reaction that we are going to have to use in order to, in order to get rid of this bromine? Anybody have an idea? Anybody has an idea? Okay. Okay, so let us start. We need to get rid of the bromine. Oh, very good. Excellent, excellent. Diazotization. We need to 
do a diazotization. That is the only way we are going to be able to get rid of that bromine. Some of you will say, how do you do that? Let us see. Okay, that was our Abra. Very good. Very good. Okay, so we start with this here. Okay, supposing we let us do the, this part here, we convert. How do we go? How do we make the benzene bromide? Of course, we all know that we take MBS. That will give us the benzene bromide. Okay. Now, now, how do we now get rid of this here? How uh, anybody has an idea? What? This is where the this is really the real question here. How do we do that? Okay, I will give you a clue. We form a we make a greenier reagent, and then we form a carboxylic acid. We add carbon dioxide. We form the greenier reagent. Then you add carbon dioxide to it. Uh, followed by adrenum ion that gives you a carboxylic acid. So you this question is not as innocent as it looks. Okay, you get the, this here. Now what do you do after this? Okay, anybody? You guys should be able to take it from here. Now you form your carboxylic acid. Now what do you do now? Now, what do you want to do now? You say you want to do diazotization. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let us see here. Okay, I will do this. Oh, very good. Tyrannic chloride. Okay, that's Jacon there. Okay, very good. You do tyrannic chloride. I see where you want to go with this. Okay, and that will give you this here. Okay, and that will give you this. Okay, so you get the acid chloride. And then what do you do after that? What do you do after the the uh, acid chloride? You form an acid chloride. No, not yet, not yet. You form an acid chloride. Okay, what do you need to do? What 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 do you need to do before you do the isotization? At this point, okay. So I add ammonia. Very good. I add ammonia. Once you add ammonia, then you form a primary amide. You form your primary amide. Then you have the. Okay, can you guys hear me? If you can hear me, give me a happy face. Okay. Okay, just give me one second. I will be back because I need to go in and out. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, can you guys hear me? If you can hear me, give me a happy face. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. I am back now. I was uh, lost my internet service for a, uh, a minute there. Okay. Okay, so we are okay, we are right here. Now if we <coughs> okay, now we take ammonia, react ammonia with the acid chloride, 
and that will give us the the primary amide. Now, does anybody know what do we need to do once we form this primary amide? What do we need to do now? What do we need to do once we form the primary amide? Okay, not yet, not yet, uh, not yet. Okay, we need to form, we, want, we need to attach the nitrogen to the, okay, yes, now we need to do the Hoffman elimination. Remember I told you this question is not as innocent as it looks. Now do the, the Hoffman elimination and that will now give you this here. Okay, that will now give you this. Okay, now, then you now do your diazotization. Okay, the diazotization that you guys have been expecting all along. Now you do your diazotization, which is uh, using nitrous acid in the presence of sulfuric acid. So this is a fairly tricky question, which requires that you know a lot about the reagents. Now you form the diazonium ion. Now once you form the diazonium ion, what reagent do we need in order to get rid of the diazonium ion? Okay, at this point use hypophosphorus. No, not phosphoric acid. It's hypophosphorus acid. P, that's a PO2, hypophosphorus acid, very good. Then once you do that, then you get your final product. Okay, so this is a very, very good question indeed. And then, of course, this is now replaced, uh, the hydrogen is now here. And that is what they ask us to do. And that is this product right here. Okay? Is there any question on this before we move on? Okay. Uh, we, okay. Let us spend about 10 more minutes before we leave. Okay. Let's go to question number 11. Okay. Question number 11. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ines, I hear you. Okay. I will, I will be there. Question number 11. Okay, let me see here. Alona, if, uh, can, if your, your, I know your mic is working. Go ahead and read this question for us. Provide a mechanism for the following transformation. Hint, it is a retro cleansing condensation reaction. Okay, very good. This is a very, very simple question, so we should be able to do it right, right away. They told us it is a retro Placing condensation, meaning that it is a reverse, okay? Reverse placing condensation. In other words, we're going back, okay? Okay. We know the placing condensation. Placing condensation, what do you do? You form an uh, inolate anion. The inolate anion attacks the uh, carbonyl of an ester, and then you get nucleophilic acid substitution. So now it will be the reverse. So. We have the ethoxide here. Okay, we have this ethoxide here. You see, this is a very simple question. It simply attacks the carbonyl right here. And of course, this goes here. Keep in mind, we say this is a reverse uh, placing. So, what do we get? Get this. Okay, now we get this here. This is here. This is here. And this is here. Now what happens? Now we are going to <coughs> we are going to reform the carbonyl. Since it's actually now this is a reverse placing condensation. Once we reverse this, instead of losing the ethoxide, what do we do? 
we lose the carbon, the carbon carbon bond will break. Okay, keep in mind you form this product and this product. That is what they are telling us. Okay, so therefore, once you do that, what do we get? We get this. And that is this here. Okay? And that is that. Now to get this, okay, we also now also obtain this. You know that anion is here, this is here, and this is here. Okay? So now to get to this, what do we now do? We simply just add dilute acid. Adrenum ion here, and that will protonate this enolate anion, and that is why they call this retro placing condensation. This comes here, attack this, attack this, and then you get it. Okay? Now, if you see this, just give, give me an happy face. So, this is a fairly simple problem. Okay, very good. Okay, so let us go to question number 12. By the way, there will be a quiz on Tuesday, so uh, make sure you tell the rest of your the students in the class there will be a quiz on Tuesday. Okay, now, let us see here. Uh, Natalia, go ahead and read this question for us. The reaction below is a combination of aldotapy reaction followed by decarboxylation. Provide the product. Okay, very good. Okay, so, and thank you. So this reaction here is a combination of aldo, aldo is an aldo type reaction, followed by decarboxylation. Okay, provide the product. For you to be able to do this problem, you need to know the, you need to really know the mechanism. Okay, so, uh, they say it's a combination of aldo type reaction. So the first thing that happens here, we have this malonic ester, and we have the uh, the base. What do you think will happen first? What do you think will happen first? Let us have this here. What do you think will happen? Of course, the base will pull up, pull the this here from the inole. They are not asking for the mechanism, but for you to know this, you will need to know the mechanism for this reaction. Okay, so you form that. You form the enolate. Now, this is where it looks like the aldo. Now, this enolate now will now attack the carbonyl of a ketone. Comes here, attack the carbonyl of the ketone. This is now where it looks like an aldo type reaction, and then what do you get? You get this. Yeah, this here, and then this. Okay, now once you, you keep in mind you have a solvent in solution, the solvent will protonate the alkoxide, so you're going to end up with your, what looks like your aldo. And then once you form what looks like your aldo, okay, and that will simply, you will dehydrate. Don't forget that dehydration takes place, lots of water, in an aldo reaction between here and here, okay, and then that gives you, that gives you, we see, it, that gives you this here,
Okay, let me go ahead and okay, let this out also. So you now you get this. Okay. Now, okay, now this is where this is like your Aldo because now you get the hydration right here. Of course, water is formed. And now, if you now take this, you said decarboxylation followed, followed by decarboxylation. If you now take that to do decarboxylation, of course, you do, you hydrolyze the, this ester to carboxylic acid, so you get this. And now, once you then apply heat, you now get this product. You now lose the carboxylic acid. And this is the product they are looking for, okay? So now, this is the final product right here. So to know this product, you definitely will need to know the mechanism of the aldo reaction. Uh, in essence, uh, the aldo reaction, you form an enolate, uh, which is what we're forming here. And then that enolate reacts with a carbonyl of a ketone or an aldehyde to form what is called, what it looks like an aldo. And then that aldo will there will be will lose water, which is what you get here, dehydration, and then they also tell us there is decarboxylation here. To get decarboxylation, you have to transform the ester to the carboxylic acid by, hydro, by acid hydrolysis right here, and you get the dye acid. So you get the beta dye acid, and then when you apply heat, you get your carb uh, carboxylic acid as a product. Okay, so let us do... Now, this will be the question of the day. Uh, okay, I know, let me, before we do this question, I know that Ines has been asking us to do uh, 14. Let me uh, do uh, 14 real quick. Okay? Okay, let us do this. This is a very simple question. Then I will get back to question number 13. Okay, uh, Kiera, go ahead and read this question for us. Propose a structure for the amine CAH11 um, nitrogen oxygen having the following P and MR spectrum. The multiplicity and the number of hydrogen flash signals are provided. Okay, thank you. I'm very good. Okay, now what you have here, the, this is four hydrogen here because they tell you that the uh, multiplicity and the hydrogens are provided, and this is what we call a doublet of doublet. Here, this is two hydrogen here, and this is what you call a quartet. You guys should know what all that means. Here, this is also two hydrogen here, and this is a singlet, a broad singlet. And this here, this signal here, this is three hydrogen, and this is what you call a triplet. Okay? Now, the key to this question is, of course, you have the formula here, CH, H11, nitrogen, and oxygen. The index of hydrogen deficiency, IHD, which we use the formula, carbon, number of carbon atoms, minus number of hydrogen atoms divided by 2, minus number of halogen divided by 2, plus number of nitrogen divided by 2, plus 1. If you use that, okay, number of carbon atom here is uh, 8. Okay, number of hydrogen atom is 11 divided by 2. That will be minus 5.5. Uh, there is no uh, halogen, so we don't need to worry about that. Then plus number of nitrogen, it's only one nitrogen, so that is 0 0.5 plus 1. If you work that out, that will turn out to be 4. 
In other words, you have the index of hydrogen deficiency for this molecule is four, which means that you have a combination of uh, ring and double bond and uh, in this molecule. But you could tell that right away, you have a signal at 6.8. Okay, that tells us, and it's also four hydrogen. So what that tells us is that you have a benzene. Anytime you have a signal in that region, and it is what we call a doublet of doublet that tells you it is a benzene that is para substituted. In other words, you have a group here, you also have a group here, and that is why you have four hydrogen right here. Okay, so if that is the case, they've already told you you have a quartet two hydrogen. Okay, that means that is seeing three hydrogen. You also have a triplet, three hydrogen. That means that is seen two hydrogen. So you must have this fragment right here. Okay? So that is the case. And then you have, so <coughs> you know that you have CA2, CA3. You also know you have oxygen in this molecule. And then they said this here is a broad singlet, two hydrogen. See, what I would then at this point say, that could very well be. Because now we've accounted for just about everything. That could very well be a, an NH2. Okay, so this is almost like plain detective here. Okay, so we've accounted for everything except for oxygen. Okay, so supposing I say, okay, supposing this is here, amino is here. Okay, and then CA2, CA2, CA3. Something is wrong with this. Okay. Because oxygen is missing, so therefore, for this signal to be four point, uh, about three point eight, that means this hydrogen must be close to oxygen. I would therefore say this molecule is this right here. This molecule must be this. We have oxygen is right here, and then you have this CH two and CH three. Okay. And this is consistent with the data that they, they have given us. Uh, this this here, this CA2 here, that will be the signal at 3.8, okay, which is a, a quartet. And this as uh, the hydrogen, this CA3 hydrogen here, that will be the signal at about 1.3, uh, which is a triplet. And the signal here. Right here, that will be the signal at the at the uh, the, the chemical shift at about three point uh, I would say three point four. This is about three point four parts per million. Okay, so what we've done here is to construct uh, the uh, original molecule based on the information that they have given us, and that is the answer to this structure here. Okay, is there any question on this? Okay. Uh, we have spent uh, one hour, fifteen minutes. Let us see whether we can quickly do this. Number thirteen. This is a very complex one. Number thirteen. This is a. Uh, do you guys? Do you guys see have the uh, the stamina to do this? One more problem before we go. Yes or no? Give me yes or no. You want to do this, or you want to do this in class? Okay, if you know that we do it in class, let us see. Yes, you want us to do it here. Okay, okay. Yes, okay, everybody say yes, okay. In class, what's to Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, let's do this. It's a very interesting problem, but uh, <clears throat> okay, now you have to bear with me on this here. Uh, what they want us to do here, okay, let us see. Uh, Okay, Natalia, go ahead and read this for us. The transformation below starts with a Michael addition, then followed by an L alzole reaction. No condensation. Provide a mechanism. Okay, thank you. Now, when they say followed by aldo condensation, uh, aldo reaction, no condensation. In other words, this the aldo reaction stops uh, when the aldo is formed. You know that there is no loss of water. Okay. Let us see this. Say so this reaction starts with a Michael addition. Okay. Now you will get a question like this in your exam. 
Okay, uh, this is a question that actually forces you to uh, to think in terms of uh, those uh, uh, left from moving around. Okay, so what we have, take this out of here. It's a Michael addition. Before we do this, let me go ahead and number this all of this carbon here. That is the only way this will make sense to all of you. Let us say this is carbon one. That's a metal group. Carbon two, carbon three. Carbon four, carbon five, carbon six, carbon seven, carbon eight, carbon nine, carbon ten, eleven. Let us call this twelve. Let's call this thirteen. Let's call this metal here fourteen. Okay, now I want you to follow this very, very closely. The first thing that happens here, remember in Michael addition, you need a nucleophile. And then you need an alpha, beta, unsaturated uh, carbonyl compound. Okay? So, the first thing we want to do is to generate the nucleophile. This hydroxide here. Okay, we'll come here. Taking a look at the final product here. We'll come here, pull this here. And this goes here. Okay? Okay, so let me go ahead and write the what you get. Okay, that will be the nucleophile that we are going to use in the Michael reaction. Okay, so now you get this. That will be your nucleophile in the Michael reaction. We have this, we have this, we have this, 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 this. We have this, this, okay, so from that next flow, let me go ahead and number this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and this metal is fourteen. Now let me ask you this. Now we have the nucleophile of the Michael reaction on carbon number three. Now which carbon? Now keep in mind it has to attack an alpha, beta, unsaturated uh, carbonyl compound. Which carbon will this carbon number three attack? Just give me the number. Which carbon will it attack? Exactly, number seven. Because this is an alpha, beta, unsaturated system right here. Very good, very good. Attack number seven. Everybody say that. So you, I think you guys know exactly where we're going here. So this comes here. Attack this. And then this pile let on goes to here, to eight. Okay, so therefore, Okay, at this point, I am also now, since we have, uh, we have ethanol in solution to save ourselves some time, once we form the pi that the electron goes here, this hydrogen will add to, will protonate that, that carbon. So you are going to get this. You want to follow this very closely. Okay, that is there. Okay, so now we have Okay, let us count this. See we have this. This one, two, three, four, five. So we are going to five form a five member ring. Once this carbon number three attacks carbon number seven, that is Okay. So now, once you do that, keep in mind the only reason why once we form this enolate uh, right here, this uh, hydrogen here will protonate the enolate on carbon number eight. Okay, so therefore at this point, what else do we need to do? So now we have, okay, I really do need to do it so that it will look more like this here. Okay. Now we have this here. 
Okay, I draw it this way. It should be more obvious this way. Now, that's carbon one, two, three. One, two, and three. Now, what you now have here at this point, uh, what do you think is going to happen? What is going to happen now? We are now going to form an inolate on this carbon because at this point we want to form, we want to uh, uh, attack this carbon here, carbon number nine, which is carbon number nine. So you form an inolate. Okay, to save ourselves some time, uh, we know we are going to form an inolate, so I'm, I am not going to draw that. So we put this hydrogen here, form an inolate here. So let me go ahead and simply just do that. Okay, and that inolate now will not attack this. And then this comes here. Okay, now once we do that, then what do we get? We now get this. This here. Okay. We have this, 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 this right here. Okay, this right here. This right here, right here. Okay, this carbon is here. Okay, now this one is here. We have this here. Now let me write that better. We have this here. And now this one here attacks the this carbon right here. Let us draw a long attack this carbon number nine and then you have this. Okay. <coughs> okay, attack that carbon number nine. So now once we protonate this, now we protonate that with uh solvent and that becomes this here. Okay, and that is this one here and this one here. Okay, and that is what you have right here. Okay, so this is our, let us look at here, this, at this point, this is our Michael addition. And right here is our Aldo, Aldo reaction without the dehydration. Okay, so this is the end of our session today. Is there any question on this? Okay. Okay, uh, for those of you who want to stay uh, behind for another five minutes, uh, if you have additional questions, uh, I will stay around, but I'm going to stop the recording. So officially the session will be over once I stop the recording. And then if you have additional questions, you could ask me those questions before uh, for the next five minutes. For those of you leaving us, enjoy the rest of your evening.